this man is so intellectual. And somewhere up there in Detroit, that's where he's from, on Warren Street, I believe, there's a university called Wayne State University. And I'm thinking about his intellectuality. Uh, and I'm thinking about the university. And I call Wayne instead of Wade. Uh, it makes him no less intellectual. But his middle name is Wade. And we're glad to have him. He's a pastor. He, he has... I want you to pray for this man because all of our leaders, these leaders of organizations, it's no small thing. When you're trying to reason and sit down and lead and give vision and direction to men who think they know as much as you do and the majority of them feel like they ought to be sitting in your seat and you're trying to walk in humility and lead them in this season it can be very challenging. All of them are bishops, just like he is, and that's not the easiest challenge. So just remember him in prayer with this great organization, the GCAF that he's leading uh, for this season. He also has a responsibility to all the precious saints of Mount Zion. And I'm going to tell you, like my pastor said many years ago to the great sites, Mount Zionites, you're going to have to grow up. If you haven't, you got to grow up real quick because your pastor can't always be there holding your hand and putting out fires that shouldn't have been started. He has an organization that he has to lead, and then he, the husband of a very fine Christian lady, and so he has a wife. He's already said he's in trouble with her. Take her peace offering. <laughs> um, he's a husband of one wife. He's a father. So he's a family man. So you got to share him with his family. You got to share him with his organization. And then you have to grow up and let him lead you and not have to carry you. But we are grateful for the sacrifices that he has made to start us off. We want it to start off so bad with him that we added an extra day to our convention this year. We usually start on Wednesday, but he couldn't be here on Wednesday. And wasn't supposed to be here on Tuesday. <laughs> Y'all laughing, but I'm just telling you. Uh, we need to be grateful for this man. Now, uh, as he comes... I want you to think about something. I want you to think about something. I listen to the praise leader, and I listen to so many praise leaders. My son's one of them and many others. And I hear them just using all the energy and everything they can to try to get folks up to praise the Lord. Now, I'm betwixt and between because I don't believe that ought to have to take place. Uh, I don't believe it should be taking place because I believe we ought to just spontaneously be worshiping and praising God. I'll share this with you as this man comes to the podium. This is our 104th convention, which means for the last 104 years since the late great Bishop Haywood first started having conventions, he had in his mind he would bring some preachers together and have fellowship and study the word of the Lord. That was his whole concept, to convene together for fellowship and enlightenment, spiritual enlightenment. And I'm sure when he started doing that under, the, under a tent, when he started doing that, that he had no idea that 104 years later, the saints would still be coming together. Still be coming together. So would you please receive Bishop Lambert Wade Interlake Gates with a hearty amen. A hearty amen. Thank you, Bishop uh, Fennell. You're much 
too kind tonight. And again, it is our honor. Let's thank God for our bishop one more time. He's such a blessing and, and so kind. I'm going to ask us, if we will, to join hands with those who are near us and bow our heads for just a moment as we pray. Father, we thank you tonight for your divine providence and your grace that has brought us together here at the Mother Church. We thank you for the service and for everything that has transpired. And but always, Lord, it's our prayer and desire that you are pleased. And now bless us in these next few moments to preach your word and to hear your word. Let your preacher and the saints, Lord, be blessed and edified. upon us in such a way that we're able to give you the glory that you do. Now, be our healer, be our deliverer, be our blesser, be our savior, and our redeemer as you already are. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Let's clap our hands one more time. thankful to be here and be a part of this great service on tonight. <clears throat> I want you to go with me for just a few moments <clears throat> to Numbers 27. We're not going to be long by God's grace. 27th chapter of the book of Numbers. I just would like to read one verse in your hearing tonight, and that is verse 5, Numbers 27, it says, and Moses brought their case before, or their cause, should I say, before the Lord, and may the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word, for we are the hearers, and by faith the doers on tonight. That's Numbers, the 27th chapter, and verse number 5. Now I ask if you would, uh, let's read it again, and as is my custom, let's read it aloud this time in unison. What does it say? Moses brought their cause before the Lord. And just one more time, because there's nobody here but us, you can read it again just to get it in the atmosphere and what does it say dear saints of God and Moses brought their cause before the Lord and may the Lord bless us tonight I want everybody to, to tell somebody take it to the Lord take it take it to the Lord. I don't have a long message tonight. Um, I really don't have a deep message tonight either. Rather simple. The words of that message title and text are, are simple. But uh, the longer I'm with the Lord, I, I find sometimes that what we really are in need of is to be recalled to simplicity. Sometimes our sophistication and so-called training makes us miss God, causes us to miss out on his moves and, and his action and on divine activity. Sometimes we go the roundabout way to solve problems. I don't know if the word vicissitude has been with me lately when we deal with the vicissitudes of life matters of life sometimes we forget that God is the common denominator and that God is always the one that brings order to dissonance and discord and confusion and so tonight for whatever reason I'm drawn back to these words that are here 
in the Holy Spirit. I suspect that for most of us, they're, they're kind of hidden mm -hmm. here because Numbers is probably not a book that we tend to uh, hunt around in a whole lot. There are other books that I think are higher in, in ranking of priority of reading and studying for saints. Books like the Psalm, the Psalter, which is so rich with sweet melodies and songs of Zion. We associate ourselves there. We love the New Testament because I suspect, uh, at least for me, the New Testament is a whole lot easier reading than the New than the Old Testament. You get in there, Matthew and Mark and Luke and John and sift through the Gospels, and from the Gospels, certainly we apostolic. We love Acts. Amen, because Acts is, is where we associate our beginning from and all the activities of the Holy Spirit there in Acts. And then we dwell in the letters of Paul and the other uh, Bible writers because there we receive information about how to regulate the church. But on the other hand, <coughs> Old Testament for many of us is a little more arcane, a little more difficult. Uh, have to work a little harder to extrapolate uh, principles and truths from it. And, and in our mind, much of it, it, we dismiss because we think it doesn't have relevance to us. I told the, the church I pastor, the saints that I pastor, and the churches I pastor that there's a move afoot today, and I'm sure some of you have heard about it, that wants to, to disband the Old Testament uh, in Christendom and some of our churches. Bible, you know, talks about becoming wise in your own conceit. And sometimes, you know, we get so smart, we lose God. God just sort of evades us. And, and I think, you know, you can get so haughty and so arrogant until God will just leave you to your own devices. Let you meander alone and let you think that you're right. <clears throat> well, the Bible says there, there is a way that seemeth right. Satan masters, you know, somehow in corralling us down that pathway and down that road and, and because we're so caught up in our intellect and we come to believe in ourselves until, until we think that we're wiser than God. And so there's a group that thinks that the Old Testament no longer has relevancy to the church. Matter of fact, one preacher said we don't need to read from the Old Testament. Because that God is a dark God, and, and his practices are strange, and, and uh, he's a torturer, and he's a, he's a violent God. Amen. But that's because he doesn't understand God's word. God is, is not violent. God is not uh, a torturous God. Matter of fact, uh, the definition of God is, is three words. It says God is love. Amen. And he's not just loving in the new, he was loving in the old. Matter of fact, in the old, that's where he said, with loving kindness have I what? I drawn thee. Amen. And, and then uh, this age is so uh, messed up until we disassociate love with discipline. Amen. But the Bible says the Lord chasteneth whom he loveth. Amen. Thank God for his chastening. Thank God for his correcting. Can I get a witness? Child that's raised up with no discipline, that means he's got parents that don't care nothing about him. Let him do whatever he wants to do. But, but God said, I, I love humanity so much until I set boundaries for them. You can't live any kind of way because you don't know it's going to bring destruction to you. And so I have to set some girders and set some boundaries. How many glad for God's girders and boundaries? Amen. Some of us wouldn't be sitting here tonight if God hadn't put some boundaries around. Amen. We got mad at that moment, but we're glad now. Amen. There's some stuff we would have did if we could have done it. I, I wish, can I get some witnesses in here? I know we're sitting in here pious and spirit-filled, but we ain't always been pious and spirit-filled. Amen. Before God got a hold of us, we were devil-filled, flesh-filled. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Fleshly, walking in the flesh. 
living in the realm of carnality, following the edicts of our mind. But, but I told the saints in Chicago last night, I'm, I'm so glad that God stopped some of my plans. Amen. Got in front of me. Can I get a witness in here? Blocked me. And I, some of us got angry. We're praying about it. Didn't even know why it was happening. You, and you didn't even know. You thought that you were being cursed. And it took you getting saved to find out that God was blessing you all the time. Didn't let you get in that mess. Didn't let you get caught up. Hello, somebody. It looked good, but it wasn't good. Death was behind it. There's a way that what? Seem if right. But death is what? The end there of God. I just want to thank you for covering me tonight. Blessing us tonight. And so, so they were wrong when they, when, they, when they attacked the Old Testament. They were wrong when, when they dismissed 39 books of the Bible and say they don't speak to us in the New Testament. Indeed, the Old Testament. Can I have about 10 minutes? Old Testament lays the foundation for the New Testament. And I think that's part of what's wrong with today's church. They, they want to get rid of the foundation. But you can't keep building with no foundation. Something got to be older in the building. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I, mu I must be in the wrong church. How many of y'all know? S foundation goes in first. Then the rest gets erected up, and and I don't know any intelligent building uh, uh, builder that puts a building up, and while it's going up to the top, they go down and pull out the bottom. <laughs> Everything gonna crumble. Oh, the foundation needs the structure, but the structure needs the foundation. Uh, I'm, I can't, somebody shout glory and how everybody tell somebody we don't need to get rid of one another. Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, uh, uh, I want the old folk to shout out and say we need the young folk. Because something got to go on top of the foundation. But, but I want to remind every newbie in the house, you still need the old folk. When you get rid of the old, everything going to fall. Got to hold on to, to some of those foundational truths. I, am I in the right church tonight? Got to hold on to some of those those baser things. We call them baser, but but you got to hold on to that base that is at the root of the building, and and everything is tied into it. Matter of fact, let me just pivot over here, and that's why you know I'm glad that I'm still apostolic. I'm not gonna get no help about that. Still apostolic. I'm progressive, but I'm apostolic. I embrace change, but I'm apostolic. Amen. I'm adding a new story to the building every day, but I'm still apostolic at the foundation. Holiness is still right. Jesus' name is still right. Talking in tongues is still right. Can I get a witness in here? Nothing, nothing changes with the foundation. We, we just look better as the structure goes up. We become prettier. And, and so we need the old and and I'm saying that because uh, we need uh, uh, everything between Genesis and Malachi. And we need these books that are in the Bible. And we need to go back sometime and, and read about Israel. No, we, again, we've been freed from, from the ceremonial law, but we haven't been freed from some principles that are embedded in that law. And that's why we can go back and get it. Because in there, there are types and shadows of, of how we're to conduct our lives today and when you dismiss that part of the Bible, you, you dismiss the revelation of God because the new brings out the revelation of the old. And, and if you didn't have the new, we wouldn't know what some of that stuff meant. But, but because we got the new, we know, amen, what it meant. Can I get a witness in here? And so there are things there that, that help us. And, and when we read tonight in this text, I'm almost through already, about seven minutes, when we read in this text of we see God working in the old, in the midst of the, of the Pentateuch. We're almost to the end of it. Uh, uh, there's just one more entry, and then the Pentateuch is over. P P Penta uh, meaning five, and Pentateuch referencing, as you know, uh, the first five books of the Bible. Genesis we have, and Exodus we have, and Leviticus we have, and then Numbers, and uh, uh, then 
finally we get to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is the second giving of the law. Genesis is the beginning. Exodus expl explicates how God brought uh, Israel out from Egypt and began to transport them to the promised land. And, and really what you have, you have between Genesis and between Deuteronomy, you have what I want to call tonight a divine sandwich. And, and uh, that Genesis tells us about the beginning. Gen well, Genesis just tells us how we got in this mess and, and how things got twisted and, tr and torn around and, and messed up. And then Deuteronomy, amen, comes back and, and is a reapplication of what is learned from Exodus and what is learned in uh, Leviticus and what is learned, thank God, in Numbers. Deuteronomy comes back. It's a, it's a second giving of the law. The law is given, thank God, in the book of Exodus. And Moses goes up <clears throat> to the high mountain and, and gets that revelation from God. He's got to get it printed again because, you know, the people, amen, they act up while he's away. Amen, because they're, they're caught up in personhood instead of the Godhead. And, and so when Moses goes up in the mount, y'all remember that? Amen, they, they stayed down and, and they messed with the assistant pastor. And the assistant pastor, <laughs> excuse me, Elder Brand, assistant pastor, amen, didn't have no strength while, while the man of God was in the mountain. And, and the people got all out of order and, and you know what happened, but but God uh, gave them another chance. And how many of y'all glad he gave you another chance? We don't want to be too hard on them. They messed up, but but we've messed up too. At least two times you've messed up. And, and if we told the truth, probably a third time, maybe a fourth time, maybe a fifth time. Now, well, he's just the God of chances. And, and I appreciate his mercy. That, you see all of that in the Old Testament. You see the mercy of God, the grace of God. Amid the sternness of God, amid the, the justice of God, and, and because he loves us so much, he doesn't want us to live in a sinful condition, and, and his goal is to deliver us out of our mess and shake off that spirit of rebellion and repugnancy because sin is an affrontery to God. Sin is an assault, an insult to God, and so the Bible shows us all of that here in the Pentateuch. He brings them out. He brings them out. And they have their time in, in the wilderness, what we call the sojourn in the wilderness. Shouldn't have been a sojourn. Should have been a pass through. But because they didn't have faith. You know what? Faith will save you time. Faith. Faith. I, I, I just wanted to give somebody that for free. Faith will. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It'll save you time. If, if you're just going and believe him in the first place. The problem with us, again, we're too smart, and, and we want to figure stuff out on ourselves, and, and then we want to take things into our own hand and work it out for ourselves. But, but if sometime, if you would just cut off your mind and say, Lord, I believe you, God will work some things out supernaturally for us. Oh, I, I wish I, 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 am I in the right church tonight? Let me just see the hands of you that are not so smart. You could use a supernatural move of God. I, oh, tell your neighbor, I, tell your neighbor, I need God to do something supernatural in my. They don't even understand what you meant. So tell them, I need God to do for me something I can't do for myself. I need God to, I need God to come in, work out the things that I can't work out, fix the stuff that I can't fix. Straighten up to places that are crooked that I can't straighten up. Oh, I'm so glad that, that we have that kind of God. And, and he told us if, if all we got to do is just believe him, just trust him, and, and I, I'll, I'll fix it quicker than you think I'll fix it. And I may not fix it right away, uh, but I'll fix it after a while. I got to put a little time in there because faith is created by time. But... But, but if you let me do it, I'll do it quicker than you can do it. I'll do it before your mind can make the calculation. Matter of fact, I'll do it when you think I'm not going to do it. Why I, I wish I was in the right church. Why your eyes are shut? I'll come in and work. How many know God can work overnight while you're down in your bed sleep? Anybody? Let me say, who in this church has gone to sleep with a problem? And when you woke up the next morning... God, God had worked. 
God and worked it out. Uh, well, we got to run on in a hurry, but tell your neighbor, he, he's worked it out for me like that. And, oh, oh, tell him, tell him he's done it. Ask him, how many times has he done it? Tell him he's done it over and over and over. He always amazes me. Always, always, always. And that's in this pentatone. That's in that journey. That, that's going on, thank God. In Exodus, so so they walk around. It could have been short, but they walk around. But but even even in that, I'm still stuck on another principle, and that is that God takes our mess, and with our mess, He calculates it into His plan, and and that's why you know I have confidence in God. I don't take God for granted, but I have confidence in Him. I don't take His mercy for granted, but but I have confidence in Him. Amen. He, he loved me so much until he calculated my ignorance, my rebellion. Can I get a witness in here? He put it in his plan. Amen. And then my ignorance and rebellion, when he should have killed me, he makes it into a lesson. Takes my stuff. Can I get a witness? Helps me to learn. How many have learned from your mess ups? Learn from, from, from the things you've done. Learn from your history. It's a fool that can't learn from history. But God says, I let you go through it. I could have stopped it. I should have killed you. But I loved you so much, I wanted you to live. And I, I, I spoke uh, it out in eternity. I'm going to let them go through it, but I'm going to bring them out a better person. The devil's going to mean it for evil, but I'm going to mean it for good. The devil's going to do it to destroy them, but I'm going to overrule the devil. I'm going to bring them out. Bring them out anyhow. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Look at your neighbor and say, I should be dead, but, but I'm still alive. The devil tried to take me out, but God wouldn't let him take me out. Brought me, brought me, brought me through, brought me through the wilderness. Brought me, thank God, along this journey. Brought me, amen, down the pathway of life. Took me through uh, that circuitous route, those turns and ups and downs and ditches and gullies. That's all a part of life's process. That's all a part of this Pentateuch. That's all a part of Exodus. That's all a part, thank God, of, of what we read as we journey to the book of Numbers. God regulates Israel. God gives Israel instruction. God gives Israel rules and regulation. There, there's some things I want you to, to, to live your life by. Yeah, because you belong to me, you got to live for me. Because you're my heritage. And, amen. You got to shine for me. You, you. Can I say that phrase again? You are the people of my name. I'm going to be saying that for the next week or so. I'm going to tell them that in Orlando. You are the people of my name. I, I have put my name on you. And that means that, that you can't live any old kind of way. You, I put my name on you. You must appreciate who I have made you. You must appreciate what I have called you. You must embrace your authenticity and your uniqueness. Hello! Somebody shout glory and I, I made you. I made you. There's more to it. Amen. We spend our time looking in the mirror when the Bible says I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I, I think we shortchange that scripture there. There's another reflection that, that's bigger than the face. Y'all ain't saying nothing. There's another reflection that's prettier than your hairdo, prettier than your mascara. There is a spirit person. God said, God said, I made it in my image. I made it in my life. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. I, I gave you the privilege to be me. A dog can't be like God dog can bark. A cow can go moo. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But they can't be like God. A cat can meow, but they can't be like God gave us his spirit. Hey, put his spirit in us. Put his spirit in us. Put his spirit in us. He said, I want to shine out of you. You're the only one that can give me that true praise. Oh, I know the other ones can praise me. I know, I know the dog, when they bark, that's a, that's a praise to God. When the birds sing, that's giving God glory. But can't nobody praise me like the redeemed. Can't nobody praise me 
like the one I put my spirit. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him. How? In spirit and in truth. And, and so he said, because of that, I've regulated you. i got to run on. Because of that, I've, I've fixated you. And, and I put those boundaries there. Put those girders there. Told you how to live your life. That's why you got to read uh, through all that stuff in Exodus. That's why you got to read about a tabernacle. Amen. Because I got to teach you how to approach me. Amen. My, my, I got to teach you. Can I get a witness? I, I, I gave you a little, little look, look in when I called Moses in the backside of the desert. Y'all remember when I met Moses and put my presence in the bush and when Moses stopped to see and got ready to walk where I was, I told him, take off your shoes. Ground you're standing on is holy ground. I'm going to train you, Moses, how to train my people to approach me. I'm going to train you how to worship me. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you who I am because you got to know who you worship it. Tell them I am that I am. Can I get a witness? Tell them I am that I am. I'm the self-existent one that, that reveals himself. And, and, and then, then with that pattern, then he has Moses uh, in the, out in the wilderness give them that portable temple and that tabernacle. And, and they learn how to approach God and how, I don't know why I'm here tonight. They got to clean themselves up because you can't go before God any kind of way. Got to clean yourself up. Too many, too many polluted worshipers. Uh, too many polluted worshipers. Uh, I'm going to say it another time. Too many, too many polluted worshipers sitting up in God's house, not speaking to nobody. Sitting there. Polluted worshipers don't like one another. Hate and malice, jealousy, envy, strife in their heart. God, God said, take your shoes off. Take, take it off. Come before me. Come before me, right? Come before me with a good spirit. Come before me with focus on me. And, and we learned that in Exodus. I'm almost through. And then Leviticus, we get lost again because he cleans us in Leviticus. Wears us out. Look like we go from lava to lava. Washing our hands and washing our feet. Look like we go from place to place. Look like Leviticus is a bloody book. Bloody, blood everywhere. Blood on the altar and blood falling everywhere. Turtle doves and heifers. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, but I don't know about y'all. Uh, hey Amen. I'm not mad about the blood. Thank God for the blood. The blood, the blood. Blood, I wish. The blood. Who, who's happy about the blood? To, oh, I wish. Look at your neighbor. Look at him. Look at him and tell him it's still a blood church. This this is still, I'm trying to cover a lot of ground. Say it another time because we don't want to talk about it. That's what those other preachers said. We don't want the Old Testament. The Old Testament is too bloody. But I come to tell those preachers, no blood, no life. No blood, no salvation. No blood. What can wash away my sin? Y'all remember that? Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Ask them that question and then answer them. Say, what can wash away my sin? Oh, matter of fact, personalize it. Say, what can wash away your sin? Answer them back. Tell them nothing but the blood, blood of Jesus. I'm so glad. I'm so glad for the blood. I'm, I'm not going to quit preaching the blood. Matter of fact, I'm going to get under the blood. I'm going to get in the blood. I see a crimson stream from Calvary. Waves that reach the throne of God. They're sweeping over me. Matter of fact, tell your neighbor, the blood is working right now. It's cleaning me right now. It's strengthening me right now. It's covering me right now. The blood worked last night and let me wake up this morning. The blood preserved me on the freeway. The blood blessed me when I work. Thank God! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Can we take 10 seconds? Thank him, thank him, thank him for the blood. Thank him. Is this a blood church? Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him. Thank him. You may be seated, you may be seated. Got to run on, take your seat for a moment. But tell your neighbor, I thank him for it, I thank him. And then tell him how much, how much, uh, how much blood are you thanking him for? Tell him, I don't have to think about a lot. Tell him, I thank him for one drop. One drop of blood bought me a million years. So, so was 
born. Each time he shed a tear. And so it's all important. Leviticus is important. And, and then you get just to Numbers. And, and Numbers is kind of winding down. I just need four more minutes. Numbers, everything. Thank God it's culminating. Numbers. Numbers is, is, numbers is about numbers. Numbers is about the tribes. Numbers is about God amalgamating the various tribes of Israel. Amalgamating them in order. Amalgamating them in service. Can I get a witness? Telling them how they are to coordinate and work together. Can I get a witness in here? Doesn't matter what part of the church you're in. No matter what ministry you over. We're still supposed to work together. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody has their place. No, I, I wish. You know what I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the church to let everybody get in their place. And, and I'm waiting for God to eliminate that spirit of antagonism. Too much fighting in, in the body. In the organization, in our local churches, Hatfields and McCoys, deliver me from that demon. We may be different, but we're one. We may, oh, I wish I had. we may not be the same, but we're one. We may not have the same opinion, the same mindset, but we're one. And the church would work better if everybody would work together. Tell your neighbor, we need each other. Man, we're getting ready to close. Tell them, tell them again. Tell them we need one another. Tell them, tell them I need you and, and you need me. We, we, we survive together. Divided, we're destroyed. And, and we learn that in numbers. Moses is working feverishly as we get ready to close. We work from chapter 1 and, and we get here to chapter 27. Moses is working feverishly to get Israel in order. And why is he working so hard? He knows that it's time isn't long. If you read over in the next chapter, he, he's not going over. It was already broadcast to him because he lost his way fooling with folk and let people pull him out of his character. He, he was the meekest man in all the earth, but, but somewhere along the line, the people frustrated him while he was trying to lead them and, and he failed to sanctify God. And, and how did he fail to sanctify God? He simply didn't obey God. He, he did it his way in his anger, and, and he messed up, and God said, I'm not going to let you cross over. I'm not going to throw you away, but, but you can't cross over. Amen. I'm going to hold you back uh, from going over. I'm going to take you up to the mount. I'm going to let you see the promised land. Amen. But then I'm going to bring you to me, and, and don't worry, Moses, that don't mean you went to hell. I'm, I'm reserving you for myself. I'm I'm not going to take you to the mountain, and I don't have time to tell you how, how the devil and, and, and Michael, the archangel, got to fighting over Moses. And y'all remember that? Because Satan thought that, that, that he could claim Moses because he couldn't go to the promised land. But, but Michael showed up and put the devil in check and, and said, Satan, the Lord God, rebuke thee and put him back, put him back in his place. He still belongs to me, but as Moses knows that his time is not long, I, I got to get ready to get out of here. Everything is, is wrapping up, and, and so now he regulates the tribes, and, and here in this final uh, portion that I want to talk to you about tonight, he's parceling out their stuff. He's, he's calling Israel together, and he's parceling out their stuff, and, and their significance for the church. Amen. Jesus parcels out our stuff. That's what he did on Calvary, and, and that's why you should appreciate this, this stuff here. When he redeemed Israel, he brought them out to give them an inheritance. And, and sometimes we as saints have gone to sleep at the will. He didn't redeem you for nothing. He redeemed you to give you your inheritance. I snatched you out of the jawbones of hell. I pulled you out from the pit of the satanic abyss. I told the devil to take his filthy hands off of you because I redeemed you for an inheritance. Uh, I need somebody to open your mouth, get your proper voice this time, and tell your neighbor, I have been redeemed for the inheritance of God. Oh, your neighbor, your neighbor been sitting next to you all night long. And, and your neighbor, I, I feel your neighbor. Some of your neighbors been acting funny with you. They, they ain't been speaking to you. They, they've been looking at you like, you like you don't belong. You turn and they look ahead. You turn and they look up. But, but tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm going to mess with you till you talk to me tonight. Because you are sitting next to 
a designated beneficiary. You're sitting there. Oh, I wish I had. I wish. Can I get some help in here? Tell your neighbor, he saved me to bless me. He saved me. Because he got something on hold for me. He saved me. Because he saved me with a promise. He said, I reserve you a space in the kingdom. And not just in the kingdom on high. I've given you some stuff right down here. I got a blessing. Y'all don't want that. As God told me, can I tell y'all? He said, I'm working with you like I work. Thank God with Israel. I made a promise to, amen, the sons of Joseph. I promised to eat from something. I promised Manasseh something. I, I made a promise to all of Jacob's sons. I told Naphtali I'd bless him. I, I told, I wish I was in the right church. I told Simeon I'd bless him. I told, I told Judah. I got some land for you. I told Reuben, I got some land for you. Oh, I wish y'all knew the God that you serve. You are not faceless to God. Oh, your neighbors may not know you. Church members may not know you. The preacher may not know you. But God told me to tell you, I know you by name. I know. Had a praying church. Somebody ought to get happy about it. I want everybody pick up your head for a second. Lift your head up with pride, but not with self pride. Lift your head up with godly pride and look at your neighbor and say, God, God knows me by name. He knows me. He knows me. He knew my name before my mama knew my name. He knew my name. Oh, he told me to tell you. I called your name out in eternity. I called. I wish I had. Wish I had me a praying church. Tell your neighbor he called me in eternity. He called. Said with a loud voice. Said with affirmation. I'm almost. Say he called me by name in eternity. Before he named the universe, he called me. Before he named the stars in the Milky Way, he called me. Before the planets that revolve around the sun were named. I named you before Saturn. I named you before Venus. I named you before I named the earth. I named you before I let man call Mars Mars. Way back in eternity, I called out your name and I told the devil, you belong to me. And not only do you belong, your stuff belongs to me. Somebody clap your hands. glory right now. You may be seated. Take, take your seat for just another moment. Hold up three fingers. Hold up three fingers and say three more minutes. Three, three more minutes. We got to go. Time is, is far spent. I just came here tonight. Amen. To talk to you for a moment. I, I came here tonight. I've been, I've been on a little, a little thing at Mount Zion and, and at Great Apostolic. I've been on a mission. Amen. I've just been trying to stir up God's people and, and look like the Lord has, has put it in my spirit that, that we've been walking around here living beneath our privilege. We, we've been living, uh, amen, with disenchantment and, and disenfranchisement. Uh, oh, yes, uh, we've just been eking out our, our existence in God, going, going along just to get along. Uh, just I'm saved, and, and that's all I know is that I'm saved. Uh, and so I'm saved, but but I'm saved for something. Uh, I'm saved for a purpose. Uh, I'm saved for a reason. Uh, I'm saved because God chose me. I'm, I'm saved because God wants to shine out of me. And if you're not careful, though, the devil will fan you to sleep in the pew. And you'll sit in the pew and, and live beneath your privilege. Uh, you'll walk with God while living in denial. Uh, what kind of denial do you want? You'll walk with God God while being denied your right uh, by being denied your rightful place uh, you walk with God uh, but let the devil deny you your position uh, and let the devil deny you your possession uh, but I remind you of what Paul said he said that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended uh, I come to tell uh, the mother church uh, I come to remind the daughter church uh, you are not complete uh, 
until you get what God has for you. Your life is not whole. Well, the Lord just told me to tell you. That's why too so many of us are sad tonight. Got the Holy Ghost, but sad. On your way to heaven, but sad. Can I get a witness speaking in tongues? But sad. Shouting, but your shout is sad. And that's sad because you're living being denied. You're living being separated. And that's the case of this text. The text talks about a dilemma that came up in Israel when the possessions were being parceled out, when God was meeting out what belonged to the various tribes, when God had called together the different heads of house and heads of tribes and heads of clans in Israel. He was handing out their possessions. He was handing out their piece of land. He was telling them what would be their their property when they crossed over into the land of Canaan. But there was somebody in the group that got left out. There was somebody in the group that for whatever reason got overlooked. There was somebody in the in the group for which a rule had not been written. There was somebody. I wish I could get a little more help here. Somebody that was just hanging out there on the perimeter living on the outside and you'll hear a name come up in scripture. It's a name we don't talk about very often. You can read it when you get home tonight but when you go up at the head of this chapter it talks about a man named Zalophihad. Zalophihad was his name. Zalophihad. That was his name. And there was something calamitous that looked like was going on in Zalophihad's house. He had wives and they had a wife and they had children. But when they had children, they only, he only seemed to produce girls. He didn't have any sons. All he had were girls. And up to that time, the rule was in place. And the rule that, that they conducted themselves by was only a son can inherit their father's possession. If you want a boy, you were left out. If you want a male, you were left out. You had to be a male heir to inherit what was in the family tree. But this man had no daughters. Oh, he had were girls. Somebody shout glory. Shout hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say all he had were girls. No boys but just girls. No men but just women. And here they were now on the perch of the promised land. Moses, thank God, was getting ready to go off the scene. And Moses had the authority to hand out the parcel of land. And he was handing it out. But everybody got a piece but them. Everybody got a little portion but them. Everybody got a part but them. I'm getting ready to close. But I wonder, can I see some, some hands in the room? Do you ever have seasons in your life where it looks like everybody's getting it but you? Everybody's receiving something but you. Sometimes you go to church and you go to the testimony meeting and you listen to the saints testify and look like nobody got a blessing but you. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you watch the television and, and watch the wide network and the other networks. Look like everybody is getting a million dollar blessing but you. Everybody's getting a healing but you. Everybody's being delivered but you and yours. Everybody's getting a turnaround but you're stuck in the same the same old place but God told me to tell you if you want to get unstuck you got to do something about it. I wish I was in the right church. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say neighbor you got to do something. Go the other way because I'm getting ready to close and open up your mouth and say hey neighbor 
you got to do something. You want God to fix it. You got to do something. You want things to be changed. You got to do something. You want your life to start moving. Thank God in another direction. Then you got to do something. You can't sit there forever in the seat of inactivity. You can't sit there forever in the seat of spiritual lethargy. You can't sit there forever with a pliant accepting spirit. I wish I was in the right church tonight. Is there anybody in this room that just feels on the inside that there's more that God wants to do with me? Somebody shout glory. Shout glory another time. I got to get ready to close but lean over in one direction and say hey neighbor I need somebody to help me tonight would you pretend that you are preaching and get your preacher whiny voice and say hey neighbor say I don't know about you but I believe that God has something more for me I've been hanging in the same heart I've been walking around in the same circle look like my feet have been stuck in the same place I've been trying to make a move but look like I can't make a move I've been trying to make a turn but look like I can't make a turn I've been trying to shake off the mess look at your neighbor say but look like I can't shake it off when I try to do better look like things get worse when I try to work harder look like the pathway gets more difficult I wish I was in the right church I need to see the hand of somebody that need a breakthrough is there anybody at Christ's temple tonight that need a breakthrough from God shake somebody's hand and say hey neighbor say I don't know about you but I need a breakthrough from God I've been saved a long time I've been walking with God for a little while but look like I'm stuck look like I've been stagnated look like I got a ceiling that's bounced boxed in up over my head look like I got walls on every side I can't get through look like I got issues look like I got problems that I can't seem to get over I tried but I can't work it out I pushed but I can't make it move and that's how Zolofi had that's the place his daughters were in they were in a place where regulation had them bound they were in a place where the law had them boxed in it had been decreed that only a man can get the inheritance but I heard the Bible say that the daughters of Zalofi had went to Moses and they say something wrong with this what do you mean daughters I will not accept things like they are I wish I was in the right church I need somebody not to talk to your neighbor but I need you to open up your mouth and point at your situation and tell your situation I will not accept it like it is I won't accept what is I won't take it like it is I know what reality is but I won't accept my reality I don't believe God saved me to let me be in this bad place I don't believe God redeemed me to let me live in the gutter and walk from little place to little place I don't believe I wish I was in the right church I wish I had somebody that would look a neighbor in the eye and say neighbor the preacher told me 
to tell you that there are areas in your life that you shouldn't accept. There are circumstances in your life that you shouldn't accept. There are places the devil has raised up his head that you shouldn't accept. There's some stuff that's going on on your job that you shouldn't accept. There are some things working in your home that you shouldn't success. And I, I just stop by to tell somebody tonight when you can't fix it, do what the daughters of the loafy head did. They got in Moses' face and said, I will not accept it. I want what's mine. I want my inheritance. And I heard the Bible say that he took that cause to the Lord. I got to close tonight. I got to head to my seat. But I came to tell Christ, I don't know what place you're in. But the Lord told me to tell you that the place that you're locked in, it's a place for God to work. Can I get a witness in here? I remember when I was a little boy, I used to watch all of the all the superheroes that went down on television. I love Batman and Robin. Somebody shout glory. I love to watch and read about the Green Lantern. I like to watch the Mighty Thor. I like to watch Bruce Banner who turned into the Hulk. But my favorite superhero, can I get a witness in here? He was faster than a speeding bullet. Can I get a witness in here? Stronger than a rolling locomotive. Can somebody shout glory? He'd always come to the rescue. Whenever there was trouble, he came to the rescue. Look at your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor, I don't know about you, but the God I serve, whenever I get in trouble, he comes to my rescue. I wish I had a praying church tonight. Somebody help me preach. I could preach tonight. This man that I was fascinated with, his name was Clark Kent. And whenever trouble came, whenever Lois Lane got in trouble, y'all remember that? Whenever the crooks were crooking, whenever the robbers were robbing, oh, whenever trouble, thank God, was on the horizon, Clark Kent would run down to a phone booth and step inside the phone booth and pull off his glasses and say, this is a job for Superman. I got the clothes tonight. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, the preacher told me to tell you that whatever you're in is not the end. It's just a job. Oh, God. I came to tell you, give it to God, you can't fix it, nobody want to help me preach, sit to the other side, and say, hey neighbor, you played with it long enough, say, hey neighbor, you wrestled with it long enough, say, hey neighbor, you've been struggling with it long enough, God told me to tell you, is a job for me. Somebody give it to God. Somebody. I need somebody to take your problem and give it away right now. I need somebody to reach down into your bucket of trouble and pick it up and say, God, I'm putting it in your hand.
shake three hands and say, I feel some help coming on right now. Shake three hands. Tell them I feel it. Your name is confused. They thought you were talking about yourself. Go back at them. Say, I wasn't talking about me. I feel your help coming on. I feel God. He's getting ready to step into your situation. He's getting ready. Open your mouth and say, I feel my help coming on. I'm going to leave it on. Say it one more time. Open up your mouth and say, I feel my help. I feel my help. I, 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 I feel my help.
bless you. God bless you. You may be seated. Ooh. I'm feeling sanctified. I'm feeling sanctified right now. I'm feeling storefront sanctified. I, 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 I need somebody that ain't too cute to go back in the day and lean over and tell your neighbor, say, say, I'm a witness. If you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call him. at your praise. They don't know why you're praising. If you ain't ashamed, tell him, tell him I'm praising him. Because every time I call him, he comes to my rescue. Every time I say his name, he takes the chains off. God. I 
I heard some chains shaking. While you were praising God, I heard some chains falling off your wrist while you were praising God. I heard some new keys shaking to your new house, shaking to your new car while you were praising God. Somebody shout glory. Working it out. Working it out. Everybody standing if you're able. Forgive me tonight. Forgive me tonight. You don't have to get up. Your body won't let you get up. Stay seated. Mm. The Lord said, I, I've handled all cases tonight. Just because you had nerve enough to, to show up in church tonight. After all the hell you've been through last week. And the trouble you went through today, the Lord told me to tell you. Just because you showed up and said thank you. through. I didn't mean to go this long, forgive me. But somebody needed some cases adjudicated tonight. Justice delayed is not justice denied. And your praise has, has activated your advocator. And he has pleaded your cause. I need some faith folk right now. I'm not trying to get you to jump. I, I want you to believe this tonight. Tell your neighbor, he has pleaded your cause. Because of your praise. spoke. Read it when you get home. I didn't do it justice. Moses wasn't going to give it to them. Stop expecting men to work it out for you. I'm sorry. Look at your neighbor. Hold your hands out. Say it's in God's hands now. I don't care what your boss told you. Nothing against the doctor, but I don't care what your doctor said. Hold your hands out. Tell your neighbor, it's in God's hands now. I'm trying to control myself, but I still feel like shouting. But it's too, no, it's too late to shout. stood in line long enough you're no longer at the back of the line somebody say well where am I you're next in line it's getting ready to happen God told Moses they speaketh right give them their inheritance I'm through I sit down, I just want to know if there's somebody here that needs Jesus. I'm not going to make but a 
the sick, he sent him out to call. I believe this message is for the church tonight. But if you're here, I want you to come. What a time to get to get a hold of Jesus. What a time to get justice in your life. I want justice. How about y'all? Make it right with the Lord and he'll make it right in your life. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? What better church to get saved in? Come on, get baptized in the name of Jesus. Come on.